We are so familiar with the image of Jesus as a good shepherd. We forget the kind of amazing image that it is for the Son of Man to take on, to identify himself as a shepherd. Jesus is connecting the heritage of his people of the time, but with a more, more profound emphasis. But why? Well, it's important to point out that the founder of the Jewish people, God's chosen people, was Abraham. Abraham was a shepherd. And one of his son, a shepherd. And one of his son, a shepherd. All of the famous people who were part of the beginning of the Jewish people, the chosen people of God, their leaders, they were all shepherds. And so it has a very unique and important meaning in their lives. But the idea of a shepherd, of the new shepherd, comes with a new understanding when Jesus stands before his people and proclaims, I am the shepherd. He didn't say, I am a shepherd. And he didn't say that I will become a shepherd. He says, I am the shepherd. My sheep know me, and I know my sheep, and I will give my sheep life itself. Why do we need something like the Good Shepherd? that kind of an understanding in our lives today. Well, John Shea, a theologian, tells a story. He's driving his mother to his uncle's funeral. And he looks over to his mother, and she's very, very quiet. And he's wondering to himself, well, she usually has a lot to say, but she's being very, very quiet. She's not like this. And he looks at her and figures that she's mourning. She's mourning the death of her brother. But you know, she's seen a lot of mourning in her life. She mourned the death of her mother, her father. She mourned the death of her husband. She mourned the death of her sister-in-law. And now she's mourning the death of her brother. And then all of a sudden, she opens up her mouth. And she says these words to him. I am not going to be afraid anymore. I am not going to be afraid anymore. And then he's quiet. And he looks at her and realizes that he has a new mother. He thought she would say, oh, isn't this bad? Oh, I'm going to miss him a lot. And all of those things. He's not suffering anymore. But she didn't. She said, I am not going to be afraid again. And John watched her for the next couple of weeks. And it was very true. She really became a bit of a changed person. She went out and did things. She looked up old friends that she hadn't seen in years. When people needed help, she was there to serve them. When the parish wanted volunteers, she hopped right on board and was there. She was always bright. She was always more cheerful. She was one of those people you don't really appreciate until you don't have them anymore around you. They do all the quiet, all the simple, lovely things that all of us take for granted. So when John was asked several years later after his mother was gone, what was your mother like? He responded, you know, I have two mothers. I have one that was born in New York, was born like everyone else. But I had another mother who was born into new life on her way to a funeral. She took that understanding of the Good Shepherd as her way to give her a whole new beginning. And she discovered something that she could give her whole life to and say, yes, the Good Shepherd, he will always be with me and I will be one of his flock. 
she understood that there was nothing in this world that she needed to be afraid of anymore. My sisters and brothers, it was the Good Shepherd, and it is the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And the Good Shepherd never leaves his sheep. Jesus comes, the Son of God. He comes to give us life, to protect us from the life that God gave to all of us. We all need that attitude right now in our lives. I know it's tough for you with the stay-at-home instructions, but humanity has gone through this a few times before us. And during those historical struggles, people discovered new ways to live their lives. They remained hopeful and trusting in God shepherding us in all our struggles and never leaving us. You know, back in 1869, when the cholera and smallpox epidemic was happening across the United States, a woman by the name of Kathleen O'Mara wrote the following. And it was interesting that it also was reprinted in 1918 when the Spanish flu hit the United States and the world. She writes the following. And people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and did exercises and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, Someone met their shadow, and people began to think differently, and people healed. And in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, meaningless, heartless people, the earth began to heal. And when the danger ended, and people found themselves they grieved for the dead and made new choices and dreamed of new visions and created new ways of living and completely healed the earth just as they were healed. My sisters and brothers, our life doesn't end with the suffering of Good Friday. We need to celebrate Easter. And remember, Easter always comes and will always be with us for the rest of our lives. The Good Shepherd never leaves us, and we are part of his flock and always can call out to hear his voice. Trusting in that Good Shepherd to lead us, 